Irish, but I didn't like her. <laughs> but it didn't take long. I think I might have been the first person she taught to let love in. It was to let the love of Deborah in. <laughs> and Deborah is truly one of my favorite people. She is a mentor and a friend and probably one of the most intuitive, brightest people I've known. Sorry, Dee. <laughs> And uh, it is just my greatest pleasure to be able to introduce somebody who will have the biggest impact on single people of anyone I could possibly even imagine. So please welcome Deborah Burnt. So he invited me to come to Aspen for the weekend and bring my friends, and we're going to have this great weekend. And um, through there was a second night I was there, he was gone to pick up dinner for five hours. And <laughs> my friends were telling me, why are you waiting for him to call? And I was like, well, he's with his friends, and he's you know, made up those old excuses again for why I, shouldn't, I should justify having this, giving him a chance. Oh, could you silence your cell phones if people are Lana? <laughs> Just the cliffhanger. The phone didn't ring, actually. And, <laughs> but I was sitting at the bar, and I was in my mind, just still going through my head of why I should give this guy another chance, because he's so darn cute. He was so charming. He was voted best looking. But um, as I was justifying my mind, I looked down at the other end of the bar, and there he was, with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, normally, I, this wasn't a new occurrence for me, it was typical. And I said to myself, uh, okay, this is happening again. <laughs> but I heard this voice in my head that I never heard, I heard before, but I didn't really listen to. And the voice said to me, you deserve more. And Right after I left that weekend, obviously I never saw him again. Um, and I can't wait for when I'm on Oprah and I get to say his name on national television. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll never date in the US again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I actually got laid off of my job a couple months later and I ended up going to hypnotherapy school and I realized why I struggled so much with dating. And it was because there was something in my subconscious that was attracting men that would love me back. And no matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried to like the nice guy, I just couldn't, it was like I was walking, hitting a wall. And so when I discovered that, and I went to hypnotherapy school, and I worked on myself, my whole life changed. And people that have known me for years that are in the room, like good friends in Denver, have been in Denver for 15 years, and they saw me when I was very young and 
naive and still waiting for Ned to call me on my cell phone after being gone for hours. And um, I, I feel like I'm a completely different person. I'm still the good part of Debbie, but I'm the better part of Debbie. And I feel like this work, um, through the use of working with your subconscious, can really shift your life. And what happens is people don't realize how powerful the subconscious is. If you think about it, there's, your conscious mind is what you're aware of, but you don't know it, it's in your subconscious. So think about a little baby sitting on top of a giant elephant, and that elephant is your subconscious, and you're trying to steer this elephant with your, this tiny little baby, and the baby's saying go left, and the elephant just wants to go right. And you know, my little baby, my conscious mind, my logical mind was like the nice guy, but my elephant kept going, ooh, he's cute. And he was always like, <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong guy. And what I found is that by changing my subconscious, I changed who I attracted because we fit together like puzzle pieces. And even though, you're, even if you're in a relationship now, everything about your partner is a reflection of your subconscious mind. So if there's something that bugs you about them, it's more about what's in your subconscious. So it's like they're just a mirror of you. And so by changing my puzzle piece that I fit with, I was able to attract an amazing man, like beyond what I thought it was possible for me. And um, it, it, the work in the book is all about the steps I took. And part of it is hypnosis. And hypnosis, a lot of people think, is this wacky, weird guy with a pocket you know, watch and you know, the patch on his eye. I don't know. But I just got <laughs> <laughs> Pirate. <laughs> There's some of them out there. <laughs> I think Lainey did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And uh, so, so when I have people hear hypnosis and they're like, oh, that's so weird and scary, but it really is just a meditative state. And a lot of people talk about positive thinking and affirmations, but those affirmations and all the books I've read and all the work I've done just sat on the surface of my mind and never changed that elephant. The elephant kept going in the wrong direction. And what happens is we start off in this world as these beautiful babies, these be beautiful beings that are all light and all love. And then we grow up and through life, as young age, we learn what's good and bad and right and wrong. We get graded. We judge ourselves with our peers and where we fit in the world. And we make up all these stories about ourselves that aren't really who we are. But everyone has had a time in their life. And for me, when I was three years old, I reached out to my dad, and he didn't respond. And not that he didn't love me, but he just didn't know how to respond, respond emotionally. So I started making up that I'm not loved by men, I didn't know how to relate to men, and that was in my subconscious, and that's what I kept experiencing. And through the work with hypnosis, it's a thousand times powerful than affirmations. It takes a thousand affirmations to equal one affirmation in hypnosis. And hypnosis, is, all it is is just relaxing the mind so it doesn't stay so fixed, so we can reprogram that elephant and make it look pretty like a pink elephant. <laughs> <laughs> the big pink elephant. And so through this work, I learned to change my subconscious mind. And when I got out of school, it was really fun because I had a million men after me, and it was really great, um, which was the part of my book that I talk about with the mind. But then I realized there were some other things still blocking me from getting my relationship. And it took me almost two years to find my man after I got out of hypnotherapy school. And I was thinking, I've been doing all this work in the subconscious and I feel more positive, why am I not attracting the right person? And the second part of my book is about the action that we take. So it's not just about hypnosis, it's about changing your mind, changing your body, which is your actions, and clearing the emotions that have been blocking you, the jealousy, the anger, or anything from the past, clearing that up that gets in the way of you having a healthy relationship. And then the last part is your faith. So finding your